Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at Psalm 139. One of my favorite psalms. So this psalm starts off with this picture of God as someone who knows us intimately. So if you look at verses 1, 2, and 3, and 4, we read these lines. Uh, Lord, you have searched me and you known me. Verse 2, it talks about you discern my thoughts from afar. Verse 3, it says, you are acquainted with all my ways. And verse 4 says, before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Mm. A pa- picture that this paints for me is this is, it's amazing how God of the universe, this cosmic God, would you know have such intimate, personal, day-to-day, moment-by-moment, action-by-action knowledge of each mm. and every one of us. And yeah, when you think about it this way, you know, there's two ways that you could take this. Um, One way from the negative perspective is like, oh my gosh, God has like a security camera on me. It's so confining and constricting, like Mm -hmm. he's just waiting for me to mess up. And and if you take it to be that way, then yeah, then it could be kind of scary almost. Mm -hmm. But I think the way that the psalm is meant to be looked at and the way that we feel it from David's words is that it's actually a very comforting fact. Mm -hmm. Um, It's about who is watching. Yeah, who is watching, right? To David, God is his loving heavenly father. And just like, um, I think when I'm at the playground with Nate, for example, right, he, he's always kind of looking around and he's kind of cautious, but the second he sees me there, he's he's more free, he's more comfortable. Yeah, when he sees you, you're looking. Yeah, that he knows that I'm there, you know, if he falls, I'll get him and mm-hmm. whatnot. And so I think that's the way in which um, David is describing God's knowledge of him, like, yeah. And so, um, you know, not only does God know everything about us, but um, in verse seven through 12, we also get this picture of God being everywhere. Right, so there's omniscience, and then here's omnipresence. Right, you know, verse seven: Where shall I go from your spirit? Um, mm. Verse eight: If I ascend to heaven, you'll be there. If I'm in Sheol, you'll be there. Right, God is everywhere. He can meet us anywhere. And I mm. think again, the, the the picture painted here is not one of like, oh my gosh, God, I can't hide from you. Like even if I want to go to a closet, you're still right there next <laughs> to me. Like, can I get away from you, God? It's more like, wow, no matter where I'm at, no matter what situ- I'm, situation I'm in, mm. God can meet me there. And if you look at verse ten, it says, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me and so it's this picture of no matter what situation we're in god can lead us yeah he can hold us secure yeah and he's there everywhere and i think that also it leads into this thought of how there is no hiding place when it comes to god and bringing up our issues our sins before him i was thinking trying to make sense of verse 11 and 12 where it says if i say surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night even the darkness is not dark to you the night is bright as day for darkness is as light with you and i was thinking about what this means and it's essentially saying darkness is like seeing in the light for god and it means that there's no hiding place. He's like the sun. It's almost like everything is exposed as bright as day before God because he sees everything. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in a sense, that that's a really positive thing because, um, well, just looking at verse 5, it says, You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. And, and what does that word hem me mean? You know, I was looking it up because I wasn't too familiar with it. I know it's like a sewing term or something, but um, another translation for the word hem is to be hedged in, like a hedge of protection. Right, God is the one who is before us and behind us and before anything else can get to us. He's like a protective barrier that's guarding our way, guarding our path. And we have that kind of caring God watching over us who's mm. hemming us in as mm. a protective barrier. Yeah. Not only did he hem us, but he formed us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we, we continue on to verses 7. Um, oh, sorry, not 17 through 18. Um, from verses 13 through 16, you know, and it talks about being formed in our inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. And this Mm. picture here that we get is that, wow, right? God is very intentional in creating each and every single one of us. Mm. Um, We all have this kind of intrinsic worth. And um, the thought that came to me is uh, we are not accidents. Mm. Um, You know, God meant for each of us to be who we are. You know, I, I had this interesting experience as a, as a kid where I'm not sure why my parents told me this, but, um, you know, me and my sisters, we have a five-year age gap, and they told me, actually, you were not planned. And I'm like, what in the world? Why are you telling me this, Mom and Dad? Like, how do you think this could affect me? And they're like, well, we still love you, and we're glad we had you. And, but and, and I was like, oh, I don't know what to make of it. But then I thought, you know, when I bring that up to this passage, it says, like, even if my parents didn't necessarily have me in their mind, God did. And not only did he have me in his mind, but he was like, he was very intentional about creating me. And I think that just does something for our soul to know that we are not accidents. God meant for us to be here and he, and that no matter what, like we're actually valuable people in his eyes. Mm. 
was thinking about how our worth, where it comes from, and I was thinking about how worth is there from the very beginning of our lives, if you read through Psalm 139, and it's not defined by, you know, perhaps our output to society or what stage in life we're in, but there's already this inherent worth of a soul. It's God created us, and he says we have worth. Um, and he loved us from the very beginning. And I remember this shaping my worldview, even as a non-Christian, I think uh, it just made sense to me. I remember I've shared with some of you guys, but I have a heart disease and I have an implant, you know, where I took something out, put something bionic in. I remember feeling defective. Am I less of me? Am I, you know, am I, am I defective after the surgery? But here it was such a liberating thought to know, no, I have, it's about my soul and my soul is already complete and it had inherent worth from the very beginning since day one. Mm. Um, just a little side thought, you know, as we continue on, verse 17 through 18, I was just thinking, it says, How precious to me are your thoughts, O God, how vast is the sum of them. If I would count them, they're like the sand. And I was just thinking, wow, earlier it said, God searches us, he knows us, he discerns our thoughts. And so God is thinking about us quite a bit, right? And you only think about someone quite a bit if they matter to you. Mm -hmm. And to that extent, God really, we really matter to God. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty awesome thought. Mm -hmm. I was struck by, we'll move fast forward to the end of the Psalms, thinking about how David has his personal and a very accurate picture of God as a loving father, someone who knows him deeply, and it also gives him confidence to make this request. It says in verse 23, 24, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any grievous way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And I was thinking about, wow, David is asking God to expose any other wickedness in him. You know, he's humble enough to acknowledge that he doesn't know everything about himself, but, and he wants God to bring the other things out. And that shows shows us, and it's a lesson for us, that, you know, I was thinking about how David really cares about pursuing his own uh, personal holiness before God. He doesn't have that mentality, you know, I like we often can relate to, I hope I pass, or let's get this over with. You know, it's that mentality that we often have when maybe an inspection comes, or, you know, we're being tested in something, where we just hope that we can get it, cover it up and get it over with. Yeah, so if you think about what David is saying here, it's actually a pretty dangerous request. It's a dangerous prayer, mm -hmm. because if God answers that, How's that going to come? It's not going to be pleasant for us mm -hmm. to all of a sudden see what's really inside, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, you know, it's, it's the negative stuff. And yet, this is how we get redeemed in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so David has this picture of, give me a gift. And, and how might this play out in our normal lives is maybe you'll get some feedback, you know, through the word of God. It'll be like, this is what you're like. And you're like, ooh, that hurt. Or maybe it might come from a person from God, mm -hmm. right? a friend, a spiritual mentor, and they're trying to give you some truth. Um, but ultimately, as we, as God searches our hearts, as he tests us, and we have a chance to respond to that, that's ultimately going to, as it says in verse 24, lead us in the way everlasting. Mm. All right, that's all for today. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.